Okay, welcome back to, I don't know how many we've done now. This is like six or seven. Anyways, we're in it. If you're still watching, then you're in it too, I guess. Um, Jan is joining us today. Jan, hello. Hello, I'm also in it to win it. <laughs> you're committed. Um, all right, so I haven't worked on this in a few days. So good place to always start is the issues list, which is a decent record of things that's been on my mind in terms of what we need to do. I just sorted by uh, all of this to newest because I don't want like, old stuff to fall by the wayside. Um, so let's see, we have some image stuff. I haven't done anything on the front end in a little while. So it's like, maybe we can jump in and do some image things. Um, the five favorite con, since I think we talked about that one last time, honestly, that's not gonna be very exciting. It's just gonna be changing some meta tags. Um, and then the footer JSON file, I think last time we actually alluded to this. That's where we maybe ended actually, now that I remember correctly. I've got some comments in here. <sighs> what I write? Uh, route in nested directories versus node script. Oh yes. Decided to keep routes clean and make a task that generates the data file. Yes, that completely makes sense to me. Uh, we'll maybe do that one. Um, what else is in here? That's not a P1. Are we not sorted by all this again? Um, don't, not worried about analytics data or deploying. We haven't even discussed that as a team yet. Uh, this is, doesn't matter until we finish building the pages. 404 is pretty straightforward and not exciting. Um, can't upload anything. Could for sure start documenting. I probably should have been documenting as we did things, but oh well. Naming conventions. Yeah, I'll get to that. Mm, can't build up. Oh, this is about the deploy stuff. Not important for, only important for GitHub pages, but I think there's a, a bug with the static adapter. So I'm not going to touch that. Header layout. Oh yes, a consistent header. That would be good. RSS page, feed, feed page, rename. Eh. Extract color from image. That one kind of sounds exciting. Um, Jan, any, anything else that you think could be added to this? I know this is like such a, there's no like structure in terms of how I'm doing this, but it's slowly building. Yeah, um, not at the moment, but there is a lot of image things. Um, okay. Maybe so, we'll play with images well, today. Yeah. Okay. That's, you've twisted my arm. Um, because right now this is what it looks like, which is great. It works. Um, but it, there's no images. Um, so let's play with images. So we've already done our task of generating the thumbnail images back in episode something. Um, so we got our raw folder here and then it builds them and puts them assuming in static common thumbnails. So assets common and there we go. So we got those. So we can start rendering images, right? So if we go to, so we've got our index route, but like I said, I don't want, this is really just for data loading. Um, everything else I want to put in like normal soil components. Um, so we're gonna spend everything for the homepage. We'll put in this home component for the most part. Um, so we kind of have left Svelte kit land and now we're just in Svelte land. Um, so if we put images in, like we did at one point, we had them, uh, it should have an all, you're totally right. Oh, and we'll eventually figure out what the alt should be. Um, let's just start there. Save. Awesome. We've got images. I think we're done. Um, Let's look to our issues. So first of all, um, also when I randomly pause like that, it means I'm probably getting a message. So, or I'm losing my train of thought. Um, all right, let's, let's see. Lazy loading images. So this one's easy because this is something that's now, um, I wanna look at that, I had an idea. Um, if we go to, I know we have a bunch of links in here. 
um, I'm assuming somewhere in this giant thing about responsive images, there's lazy. It's really there isn't a lazy loader. Here we go. So image is an attribute loading now where you can say lazy. Um, and this actually works in everything modern, except for I think Safari, um, which is pretty cool. I'm surprised it's not in here. There must be another page for it. Um, so if we go to our image tag and we just added that, um, I think we should see some sort of lazy loading happening. If we uh, open up our uh, network. Let's make this full screen. And let's go to the network tab. Also, I've been lied to. Oh, what I do? Let's get that page. Um, maybe I have been lied to. None of those seem to lazy load. Loading, lazy. Fun. As far as I know, that should actually lazy load. Maybe my interpretation is incorrect. Um, yeah. Interesting. Well, let's go back to our GitHub where we initially looking at this. Uh, so they're doing it with JavaScript. Okay, yeah, not very helpful. Um, see what CSS strict says. That hasn't been update, updated in a while. Uh, lazy loading image. Yeah, that's what I was expecting to see. Ah, see, look, it says it's supposed to work. Loading, lazy. Da -da -da. Let's try a Chrome. It's a message for me if you pause. There is a, a Svelte Pause. component for lazy loading. There is. I don't you... want to use that though. I know of it. <laughs> um, wow, why is this? Oh. So basically I'm assuming that uses the same, oh, here we go. Oh, maybe you don't want everything images. I see, look, all of those are firing. But they're firing slowly. I wonder if it's just knowing it's like, oh, we've uploaded everything else. Let's do the other ones. Yeah, I, oh, I, 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 that would make sense. It probably doesn't know where it is on the page. So it just knows that it needs to trickle them in. Is, let's see here. Okay, we're gonna refresh again. Okay, that's good. There's only that's definitely not all the pictures. So we should see more things if we. They, okay. It was just doing it a lot more aggressively than I thought. Like you know, I don't know why so many. Oh, I know why. Because I bet right on. See that little jump right on. Um, 
load, there's actually way more stuff that's in view, even though, because until this other image loads. So like, there's actually a bunch that it thinks are close to being in view from the jump because there's no default heights. Um, I bet if we put like a min height on these elements or something, it would, only, it would do less. Okay, well, anyways, that's cool. That's already saving some bandwidth for most people, except for people on Safari. We could eventually do a, a, uh, um, a JavaScript solution, but for now, honestly, this is probably good enough. Um, I'm more curious about adding some responsive solutions in here because um, we didn't do that last time. Um, so if we venture back to this, this definitely has this, how you do responsive, I'm pretty sure. So we don't actually need, I don't think we're gonna use a picture element because this is, as far as I understand, much more for like the says art direction. Um, when you want a different images swapped in, we really just care about um, showing higher resolutions at higher browser widths, um, which we can just use source set for. Um, somewhere in here again, I imagine. Uh, how did it was that in the article? Yeah, so basically this is all we really care about um, is switching to different sizes. So I've never liked how convoluted this looks, um, but oh well. So basically like it says, um, yeah, oh, I agree, it does look complicated. Um, so let's see, let's just copy the example. I haven't used this in a minute. Um, so what it looks like, right, is we have our small resolution and we specify at what size we want it to switch at, I think, was that second value? Um, image state, file name, check, space, the in intrinsic, oh, I see, intrinsic width. Um, that's straightforward, okay, so if we put our stuff in there, we've got... And look at that, 640 right there. Um, I guess we do 640W. Next one. I don't know what the formatting happens here. Let's spell, I think it's gonna auto format it, but for right now, let's just do that. Um, 1280, 1280. And we've got one more. We've got 1920. All right, then this clearly just looks like a media query. <clears throat> Sizes, a set of media conditions. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. The width of the slot the image will fill in when the media condition is true. Ah, so that's cool. Um, so for us, the condition is actually 320 because we want to just default to, I mean, we could get much more complicated, but I think just defaulting to um, uh, 2x DPI. Um, to a uh, DPI of two, which is becoming much more standard, um, just in case. So, so at 320, we want 640. I'm assuming we just do another one of these for a second tier. Um, at 640, and for everything else. 1920. Does that sound right? Maybe. Um, and then I'm assuming this is just the default image we want, which in our case right now, um, we wanted to start with this one. 
And there are so many other image loading solutions and really tricky ways you can do this. Um, I think I just want to get something basic in place that's like good enough. And then we can come back to uh, dressing this up and getting really specific with it. Once we know like the context of how we're going to be using images, which I think we're still a little TBD. Um, and then let's go ahead and So maybe we can use these in conjunction, but let's just start with this. See if things are working. First, let's see what things are on. What image do we have here? Okay, so we're showing the 1920 there, which makes sense because I'm at like, yep, I'm above two DPI. So if we go down to so, we're, so let's go to the small setting. We should see 640 when we load this is my hope. Otherwise I didn't do it right. I don't think I did it right. Even though it does say current, so oh no, it says current source 1920. Nice, I failed. Um, let's go back. Hmm. I don't know, that looks great to me. Four eighty. <laughs> oh wait, this one's working. I think because that says seven. That says twelve eighty. Nope, still says 1280 and it should not be 1280 there. Why is that one said 1280? Let's look at the network, that'll be much more useful. Uh, oh, great, it's only in the 1920s. Hmm. All right, well, let's. I guess I should first make sure those images are actually the right size because that code looks okay to me. Uh, that would be a shocking turn of events, aesthetic. Okay, my images are actually the appropriate size, so that's good. 80s, 1920, cool. Um, let's, I don't even know. Let's, uh, just get rid of all that. Um, mm -hmm. 
wonder what happens if they're mismatched. Yes, that is clearly lower resolution. <clears throat> okay, let's just start with the two then. So if we have 640 and 1280, and we have uh, 320. Not really sure what the single 10 unit is here. Um, I guess there's no media query. Yeah, that's very tiny. Looks like it still loaded the 1280s though. It did. Another example. <laughs> I thought that was gonna be really straightforward. Um, see what CSS trick says. Uh, so you can just use interesting pixel density. Mm -hmm. Okay. The size is actually describes the width that the image will display within the layout of your specific site. And now we're getting all complicated here. And this is much more involved than I thought. Interesting, that's nice splitting it up. So this is looks like what we were doing. Okay. 
Jan, unless you have any strong feelings, I'm going to table this. And I think we need to come up more with a, of a plan of how we actually want to use this because these links are have a lot of information in them. That makes sense to me. <laughs> I just wanted some automatic, nice, easy, responsive images. Um, okay. Man, it's so funny because I used to deal with image stuff all the time, but now I realize it's been like six years since we're so image light in general. We like only do data stuff. This feels like new territory again. Um, okay, well, for now, I guess we'll just stick with our lazy loading. Um, and eventually we'll come back to this. Um, And I know we even have some responsive imaging going on on our current site, unless I'm crazy. Um, except I think it's controlled by the breakpoints, um, not like any, let's see. Commit 1280. Oh, yeah, I think we maybe knew, let's see. Uh, maybe not. Like what do we use for this one? Oh yeah, I think we just knew what different. Uh, let's see if that one's still. I don't know. Well, we're doing something here. I should, I should see what we're doing. Um, all right, that's enough of that. Um, all right, so now we're back to our really sad. Just 640 image that lazy loads. So that's a start. Um, all right, well, we can still keep with the image theme because it's this is something else I wanted to do, which was, I think we'll, are we still doing something where we wanna grab the, uh, try to grab a color from the image? Jan, is that still in the works? Uh, it's still on the table. We haven't cleared it with anybody else but i like the idea so all right well, you're down to figure it out yeah there's a few libraries that can facilitate so i want to see which one would drop in most nicely um so if we go to back to our let's clear out all this nonsense and failure um i'm Yes, this, I found a couple libraries that I want to try. So these all kind of do the same thing. They extract color palettes. Um, yeah, uh, let's see, this was, this one doesn't have a little example. This is based on a, a one that used to be a browser based one um, that I've used in the past, Color Thief. This one. Pretty straightforward. Looks, it grabs a dominant color in a palette. Uh, this one, same deal, grabs colors. Um, I figured this might be partly to figure out which one just works, go from there. Also, maybe they're going to return, if they have different algorithms, they'll have different uh, uh, results. So we might just find one that works better than another. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. Um, so the plan would be, this would be something to be packaged with our image resizing. So whenever we create our thumbnails, this is like another task that happens. Um, so if we look at our thumbnail generation script, let's find that in tasks. Um, so it could make it part of this. Um, as I'm thinking out loud, I'm, I'm trying to think if that is something that should be the same or separate. Um, hmm, it's a great question. Let's, because if we're in sandbox mode, let's just go ahead and create a separate one and then we'll decide where it eventually lives. Um, so I'm actually just gonna copy and paste it. Um, Uh, why do we have that? Has that been there? How long? Who knows? Okay, so we'll just call this 
color. And we're probably not gonna need any of this. Some of it maybe. Path in is actually gonna be, we're not gonna to wanna to work on the big images. We'll wanna work on the smallest possible image. So actually work on uh, assets on nails, 640. Um, okay, now let's go down here. Task is uh, extract thumbnail color. And not gonna worry about anything else except for seeing if we can get one of these run. Oh, interesting. I want to change that. Oh, am I in the wrong, wrong file? Oh, did I just delete that? Wait, which file am I in? I'm so confused. Oh, I'm editing the wrong one. Oops. Okay. Um, so why are there so many copies? Did I copy everything? Color, fetch Google. Okay. Um, this was some legacy commentary. Um, so let's see, which one should we try first? Let's go with, oh, this one has 1.5 K stars. This one has 10,000. This one, oh, that's that one. I say let's go in order of stars. It's only fair. Um, all right, color thief. Let's see your documentation. Oh, I did not like that documentation. Well, no installation instructions. Let's see if this straight up works. Uh, Add color thief. Wow, that's a lot of dependencies. Okay, said it was added. Um, sorry, a sketchy start without docs. I didn't see anything, right? Uh, API docs. Maybe I didn't give it credit. I didn't. I was just assumed there would be in GitHub. Phew. Uh, okay. Cool. We've done two things. I'm going to keep it lower case though. Let's spell thief right. All right. Let's just see if we can get the basic version working. Um, so let's just come up to that. Resolve. Resolve. Oh yeah. Okay. So I don't think we actually need that. Um, path in slash. Um, what's a project? Um, twenty twenty one. All right, so we got a promise then call there. All right. Okay, so I'm dumb. I'm not copying there. Okay. So we have something that's gonna happen. And that's it. Let's say let's go to package, add this script.
uh, we got something. Image is not defined. That is fair. Totally fair. Oops. <laughs> Again, that's not ideal. Let's maybe get color. That's it. Uh-huh. Get color file const file equals wait. And let's just go ahead and do that. And solve. Okay. Um, temp number three. Yay. That is gray. Let's find a better image because I think that's a dark one. That's fair. That's probably right. Um, assuming that's RGB colors. Um, jam, why are they all black and gray scale? There we go. That one's red. Just looking for the most colorful image. Okay, that one should be yellow or orange. Uh, it's a good them. challenge for you to see if you can weed out all of the grays and find the other color. Uh, shoot, I didn't copy that. 2021. 07. Rick. Okay, let me run that again. Ah, that's a different color. Yes. I'll I'll accept that as truth. Um Cool. I mean, so this is just getting the dominant color, which may be what we want. I don't know. We can also get a palette with this. I mean, that was also nice and speedy. Um, oh, interesting. Get the dominant color. Image colors are transferred through image. Oh, well, quality. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Um, you think, I mean, you can probably stop there. I mean, I guess we could try these other ones, but that seemed adequate for now. Um, I feel like we can try getting all the dominant colors and uh, see how that looks. So let's kind of just turn this into a thing that parses everything. So um, let's, I mean, we already have some of this code here. So let's just go back and grab this. So const files. If you want to grab everything, uh, okay, that gets all JPEGs, all 640 JPEGs. So now we want to loop through all file and files await get color file 
what do we want to do with that is the question. Um, I guess we just want to re return it. Uh, solve. Let's start there. Uh, const. Set color. And then we actually just want it in string form, I'm assuming. So we'll just say const uh, HTTP equals. Uh, and it's going to be color.join because that's an array. And I guess I'll just write it out as a JSON right now. I don't know what we're going to do with this. Um, oh, I guess we'll push it to an output. So let's see, uh, const output. And I'll say put, uh, push. Um, actually, because we're going to want the slug here. So we're actually going to want the file name. So const file equals, sorry, sorry, uh, const slug equals file. The, and actually, let's create a function here get slug. Because the file, right, is going to be this, let's see. Uh, it's actually, never mind, it is just the, it's gonna be this. Um, so actually, when we say get color, we're gonna to have to do this whole thing. Okay. Path. Just for, eh, whatever. Okay. So that's the full path of slug. It's really just path.replace.jpg because we don't care about that. Um, all right, so then let's push slug RGB. And at the end of the day, this finishes let us do something. Um, fs.write file sync. We'll want this in source data, presumably. So uh, source data. Actually, let's see that be actually path path slash um, thumbnail colors.json. Uh, JSON. And we need to convert our array. Output to JSON string, write it out. We need to create path out. Okay. And for sake of progress, let us just log out the progress. Yeah, how are we logging the progress here? I want to be consistent. Oh, that's fast. Hey, okay. Um, I was worried it wasn't going to be quick. I'm impressed. Thumbnail colors JSON. And if we just do a little, oh, <laughs> that's not the proper RGB value. <laughs> we wanted to join on a comma. And there we go. Um, that's great. That worked. Oh, I didn't accept. Slug is 
not what we wanted. Because uh, that was the full path. Why? Because we did path, not file. Um, also, what was the default uh, skippage? I wonder if it's more accurate. So it's sampling every 10 pixels, I believe. Quality. And then it's the center. So, I mean, if we're, I mean, it only took two seconds. So, I wonder if we change that to like five or something. Should run a little slower, but maybe be even more accurate. It seems to be the exact same thing. That's really every other pixel. It's not even noticeable. I mean, it's a little noticeable. Um, okay. So let's just look at that again. Uh, source data, thumbnail colors. Not sure what I'm looking for, but it looks like it did it. So that's cool. Um, let's actually now let's actually visualize these results. So in our home, let's just go ahead and import uh, colors from the uh, thumbnail dash colors of JSON. Let's run dev again. Sorry, resizing. Uh, let's not have these links because that's now super annoying every time I click it. Um, all right, and let's just make it a div. And let's see here. So I already forgot. Um, what slug and URL are, because I have all this terminology that we maybe will change at some point. That makes sense. Slug is slug. Okay, so we can actually map them together. So we could do what I'm getting at is a little uh, look up here. So style equals background dash color. Uh, get um, look up color of slug. Oh, let's create a, a little function right here. Um, and we'll just do a quick uh, colors dot find you know, slug is equal to slug and return if there's a match return match dot RGB otherwise we'll just return um, I guess we'll turn white and Sure. Oops. Hey. <laughs> so a lot of gray. Uh, wait, are you still here, Jen? Yeah, yeah, I was still here. I was just laughing. This is a lot of gray. <laughs> I think I can't tell what's accurate. I, I mean, you know, the thumbnails better than I do. It's, oh, this one definitely was red. So that's right. It's 100% accurate. Yeah. I feel like you're gonna have to figure out a way to be like to just like filter Not out gray. all the gray. Yeah. 
So I guess that means we'll probably Look, need we, to get a pallet. And then we might need to get a pallet though. Like we accidentally did data this. Um let's <laughs> uh, let's just now if we do this, uh div I want to look at that. It's actually more interesting. Wait, let's how are we sorting? Are we sorting by date? Sorry, so oh let's sort by let's not sort. No, let's sort by do we have date? Um oh no, sort by URL, right? Because that's 20. Yeah, URL or slug with both. Chron this is chronological. I was gonna see if you had any patterns. Oh, it definitely seems to have gotten brighter in the last. Hey, look at that. A lot more yellows and reds and oranges. I do look back um, at like what we have published before. I just scroll down the archives and I'm like, okay, what color haven't we used in a while? That would make sense <laughs> to use in this piece. Look at that, we just made a tool. Um, all right. I mean, I feel like that's exactly what we were trying to get. Um, now let's actually, you know what? Let's let's do a little more due diligence. So let's put on the thumbnail so we can see it in context to see like how good it actually is. You know, adding to M. Um, and let's put a border around the image. Border. X out of white. I mean, so nail this one. Why? Why is there? What is happening there? That's what the image looks like. It has stripes. Oh, it is. Uh -huh. it does? Oh. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. It's just like several different maps. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Nailed that one. I mean, so far they actually they look right. It's kind of like that. Uh, oh, that one's interesting. Oh, right, because it's like a red on this gray. So it's like this. Mm, I'd say the library works fairly well so far. Mm, I wonder what it would take to get like that red image. I mean, sorry, that red. I wonder if like yeah, the palette would pull out that red. I mean, this is pretty this cool. Is, this is definitely one of those situations where, okay, we only have like, you know, a hundred something images. Is it where you start to think like, is it more advantageous to go and do through and do it, you know, programmatically or, <laughs> <laughs> or is it, you know, maybe there's a step that's like, you know, an override step where we can refine. I mean, they're not wrong. They all look good. No, yeah. You know, I like, think it's just, I don't, yeah. If we can find a way to just like pick out the colors that aren't the grays. I'm just going to go through all of these. It's definitely cool looking to see. <laughs> Uh, cool. Okay. <laughs> interesting. Oh, interesting on that one. Why? That's surprising me. Hmm. Is this, I guess, in the get color thing, is it is it definitely finding the dominant color or is it uh, finding like some? Yes. Okay. So just Only because when color. you click this, I mean, assuming, because assuming, yeah, it's yeah, dominant. But, but like, see, like that, that color doesn't appear anywhere in the plate. It's kind of like a, a you know, mix of some of them. Mm. That palette mm. color is way closer to that plate color. I mean, it probably appears, it's probably hard to suss it. It's probably like 
this yeah. or something. Yeah. But it, it, to your point, it's not like a. Um, it's not like an eyedropper. It's... Yeah. Um, oh yeah. So it gets the dominant color from the image. Mm -hmm. Include get a palette from the image by clustering similar colors. Uh, yeah. So we could try that and like see if it spits out more interesting looking colors. Um, or to your point, oh, we could get we could get the palette and then filter out anything that's gray. Yep, that's what I was thinking. Because like if we go back to our um, uh, data, like this is basically a grayscale color, even though that's actually interesting. We'll have to come up with some <laughs> calculation of like how gray it is. I guess like we'll just do like a comparison of the, the delta between make sure like the delta between the three uh, values is like over a certain number. Cause like, that's basically gray. This is, I mean, great, you know, grayish, that's grayish. That's obviously, I mean, that's gray and set in the sense of black that is due. That one's off by one, but clearly, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Let's do that. Oh, it's, and then I, or maybe ooh, this might be a good stopping place. And then we'll pick up with that when we get back. Um, well, this was a very unproductive video in the sense of figuring things out, but that's the way of life. So thank you for joining. Thank you, Jan. Yeah, it was time. good potential. <laughs> good potential.